Hey everyone, my name is Rob, and I'm a front-end engineer at First Dibs. Um, so, if you don't know First Dibs, uh, it's an online marketplace for rare and desirable goods. We sell vintage and antique furniture, jewelry, fashion, and art. And our front-end team at First Dibs is all in on JavaScript, and our stack is Node, GraphQL, React, and Relay. Um, so today I want to talk about data masking in GraphQL clients. I know that Apollo tends to be a more popular choice sometimes. It's easy to get started with. Um, so I wanted to go more in depth on this feature that's unique to Relay and I think is very underrated. Um, so first I'm going to do a quick overview of the Relay API. So a query renderer is a React component provided by Relay that takes in a few props. Um, here's an example using the Star Wars API. And the first prop is a GraphQL query. The second prop is the variables for that query. And then this component is going to execute this query against your GraphQL server. And then there's a render prop, which is going to be called twice, first to render the loading state, and again with the response from your GraphQL server. So this example is using a query render, and it fetches all the data that it needs and then renders it. So up next is a function create fragment container. So create fragment container creates a higher order component, and these components are used as children of a query render. It provides a way to directly couple a GraphQL fragment to a component. This allows the component to define its data dependency via the fragment. So now here I've updated this query render to use that fragment container. We reference this fragment in the query renderer's query and we render this component in the render prop. We can also consume fragment containers from other fragment containers. So why use create fragment container? You could just write one big query that gets everything you need at the top of your app. Um, we use fragment containers because they allow individual components to define their data requirements. It's a declarative way to describe the data you need. And it also allows components to be more reusable. You can drop the component you need into other places of your app without adjusting your data fetching. If you have a component that renders a person object, you could use this component anywhere you wanted to render this type. All you would need to do is pass it a reference to that person object. Create Fragment Container also enables data masking. So data masking prevents components from accessing data they did not specifically request. In other words, it prevents implicit dependencies. And so I'm going to show an example. Um, I've created a new planet component and updated the person component to use it to render this person's home world. The planet component will have its own fragment and request whatever data it needs. I have a console log here to demonstrate that the person component, even though it's a parent of the planet component, does not have access to the data requested by the planet component. The data masking feature will prevent parent or sibling components from accessing fetch data that was not defined by their fragments. The person component is decoupled from the planet component. It only knows that it needs to pass a planet object to it as a prop. If the requirements ever change for planet component and it needs more planet data to render, no changes are required to the components that consume it. And so then how is data masking implemented? And it's a two-step process to render GraphQL data. In the first step, the network response is flattened into a store. And in the second step, data to be rendered is selected out of the store. So each object returned by the GraphQL server is put into a flattened store object. The ID returned by the GraphQL server is used as the key. If there were more objects in this response, they would each be added as separate keys on the top level of this object. Nested objects can, also, can be referenced by their ID using the underscore ref property. And a selector is created from an ID reference to an object and a GraphQL fragment. So using this flattened store object, an ID reference, and a fragment, you could create a function that returns the correct data for a component. Only the correct fields will be returned even if additional data was fetched. And this is what create fragment container does internally. It's implemented by getting the selected fields from the GraphQL fragment and a recursive function that can follow the references in the store. 
if you use React Redux, it's a lot like the connect function. If in Redux, you would write a function that would return the needed properties from your store. In Relay, this can be generated automatically from the fragment data. So here's a very simplified implementation of create fragment container. For each fragment passed to create fragment container, we check for a prop with the same name passed in and select the correct data out of the store. The selected data is passed to the component, overriding the props from the parent. Uh, so why data masking, and what's the point? It makes implicit data dependencies impossible. Let's say you're refactoring a component, and it no longer needs the field from your GraphQL server. You have complete confidence that it can be safely removed from the fragment without understanding the entire code base. This confidence is important. If you're not confident that removing something won't break anything, chances are you'll just leave it around. And then if this happens a few times, you could be accidentally overfetching, and your app will not be as performant as it could be. So this is definitely something that's useful when it's a team of engineers working on a larger code base. You're most likely to run into these types of issues as different people are working on the same files. And lastly, everything is a trade-off. You should choose your GraphQL client depending on your team's needs. Maybe that's something that's easier to get started with, or it's something that provides more constraints to bigger teams. And that's all, so thank you.